Hello my AEC techies and welcome to another episode of the Simply Complex YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing something very special. If you are new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. Head on over to simplycomplex.org. Head over to the YouTube channel or you can go straight to the YouTube channel on Simply Complex. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Today we're going to be doing an intro to Stingray flow nodes. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. The reason I want to bring this up is I want to show everyone how the flow nodes work in Stingray as an introduction. So let's go ahead and call this Stingray Intro to Flow Nodes in Stingray Episode 101. I'm going to show something really simple like a hello world to get everyone thinking about how you can use flow nodes inside of Stingray. It is basically visual programming. If you're familiar with Dynamo, and I hope you are because Dynamo is super awesome, then you should be able to pick up flow nodes pretty simple with one simple difference. But let's go ahead and get into it. Right here I have a basic project. If you don't have Stingray, uh, it's relatively cheap. It is Autodesk's Game Engine product. It is super awesome and amazing. You can always go to the Stingray website and get a demo version for 30 days and try it out. All right, so flow nodes. Flow nodes can exist in two locations. One would be like a project location, and in the view, uh, in the viewport, you can see here we've got the level viewport, which is basically this one that you can see here, and then we've got this level flow. Level flow is where you're going to be putting all your flow nodes. In this case, all we're going to do is print a text to the screen, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then we'll be able to explore the the Stingray environment in a little more detail in the next few lessons. So let's go ahead and get started. But if you want a little teaser, um, over here we have the telehandler that I built inside of Revit uh, that is now inside of Stingray. It's fully drivable. Uh, if you notice over here, I've got something special. I've got the ATACT that uh, was also built in Revit and brought in. Uh, and then way in the background you can see our little friend Boba Fett moving around doing some amazing stuff. He's ready to give us some trouble. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and get started. Level flow. It's really simple. All right, the way level flow works is basically you have a canvas just like Dynamo and you need to put down nodes or boxes and then you need to wire them up. Okay, so this is basically how it works. If you want to be able to put something on your screen, you will need to actually print to the screen. Now in the level flow, uh, then you can always, there's no uh, menu that's actually loaded. So you can right click and you'll get a menu or you can press the tab button and you can do a search. So let's go ahead and do print to screen. So we can go ahead and hit the tab and we can say print and then you'll see here print to screen. Okay. Now what's really nice about the uh, the flow nodes inside of Stingray is they're very robust. There's a lot going on and uh, it's a lot of fun to explain. I'll explain it uh, rather simply, but there's always a question mark here. You can click on that and then it'll fire up the actual help page just like so and it'll tell you what all the input ports do and what the output port does. So it is really, really, really helpful uh, to have that kind of power at your fingertips. Okay, so let me move this back out of the way. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and explain most of this stuff as well. So what we want to do is you have an you have your input ports on the left and output ports on the right, and we want to basically print some text to the screen, and we want to just basically say, "Hello Stingray." So it's relatively simple. Uh, these colors in the input ports actually mean something. Okay, the gray actually means it's a um, it's like a trigger event. Uh, that means anything you feed into it will actually trigger the event. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's go ahead and talk about the text. There's also a label and a color. You don't need all of these to be filled because they actually have default values. So the color by default is going to be white, uh, but you certainly could change that. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about text. How text works is 
this red dot actually means it needs a string input. So what I think is really awesome and amazing about the Stingray flow nodes is the color coding is actually going to define the type of input you need to to uh, load into it. So you won't be able to get a mismatch, which is super awesome and amazing. So you could go ahead and click on this um, little button here, and then you can go ahead and type the text. So we could say, uh, hello, Stingray, like so, and it's right in there. Although for this exercise, I don't want to do that. Um, I do want to feed in something. Uh, I do want to feed in a string. So uh, what you can do is we can go ahead and search for a string, and then we can say string data is what we want, string data. So that basically just means that we're going to actually set it to a certain value. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here, and now I'm going to say hello Stingray. Instead of hello world, I'll say hello Stingray. Did <laughs> I get it right? Let's see here. Let's see, Stingray. There we go. Yeah, close enough. All right, and then of course you can... Do like that. All right, very good. So uh, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out as well. Uh, okay. What's really nice too, I have some extra nodes here that I was that I was uh, experimenting with. But uh, what you can do here is when you zoom far out, do you see how it actually labels the node, which is really nice? It kind of tells you what it is. So then you zoom in, then you can see the fine print. I think that's a great little feature as well. All right. So we just need to basically line these up so you see the value which is now stingray we line that up with the text and away we go now uh, you would want to do save all so that it can get all of these saves so it can modify your scene there's another thing you need to do which is in stingray there's something that you don't necessarily have in dynamo or most other aec programs which is the dimension of time there's a dimension of time which makes things more complicated but also makes things more fun. Um, with a game engine, there's constant updates, there's constant movement, there is just, there's a dimension of time that you need to keep aware of. So, because you have motion, you have things interacting. So, uh, in this case, you need to activate this print screen. So, you need an input event. Uh, in that case, uh, there's a very common one um, called level update. Level update, basically, when you put the out to the in, basically it says, um, anytime the level is updating, I want you to print to the screen. And you're doing level updates constantly. So it's kind of like in Dynamo when you have the automatic run, although this does have the dimension of time. All right, that's really all you need to worry about. Uh, if you'd like, you could put in a label, and I like to do that. So you can copy and paste these as well. And I will feed that into the label. What another thing that's really super awesome and cool is you can pull, you can click once from the output port, the input port, and then you click on the canvas. Now it will only give you the options that's available to feed in a string. And I think that's super cool. Uh, in this case, we're going to want string data again. So that would be under data, under string data. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That way you never get the input wrong. I love that. I really love that feature. All right flow nodes that's super cool you could do it with color too boom actually uh, we'll get to this in a little while um, I don't know if there's a way to cancel it I'm sure you can leave kind of comments on how to do that colors default white let's give it a try oh we didn't set our title let's go ahead and say title give it a few spaces we'll say okay now it should say title hello stingray uh, and print to the screen let's go ahead and save one more time and then when we jump into the level viewport and then we jump into our game, we will go ahead and play it. This is just a game with an active camera. You can see it does have title and it's saying hello Stingray. It's constantly updating, so it's constantly writing to the screen. If you wanted to delay that, you can put in a delay node uh, and delay it every 5 seconds or 10 seconds or whatever you want to do. But it's very helpful to uh, print things to the screen because... Um, it's, it's helpful to do it with debug. Now, this is actually built into the game, so the user or the player would actually see this as well. You can see here if you actually jump into game mode and you were actually to start the level, 
they would also get this hello world okay. when they look around. It's constantly updating. All right, one more thing I should mention is we could play with the colors. Uh, I do want to talk about that for a moment. So we talked about the gray, which is a which is an event trigger, the red, which is a string, and then the green, or um, yeah, I suppose it's green. That green represents a vector type. So you'd have to define a color by vector type. So uh, there's a few ways we can do this. Uh, you can click on here, and you can go to Math. And then under Math, you can go Vector. Under Vector, you can say um, Vector from Components. So if you can see here, uh, you can actually create a vector and then feed it into the color. Okay. Uh, a color is a vector because it is using the the um, RGB type of color system. Um, so we could actually put in other values here. I don't know what it, maybe 200, perhaps something different. And then I guess we can use all of them. And that just creates a vector, and you can see the vector is green to color. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save all. The reason you do save all is because there's a lot of components within a game engine, and you'll need to be saving them. So I'll go ahead and print screen, and remember the color was white. And Whoops. <laughs> Let's see if it changed it anymore. There we go. Ah, still white. Let's see what the problem is. Let's go back. Could that be white? I suppose it could be. Let's change this to zero comma zero. Let's try that. Let's see here. Save all. I'm not the red green, red blue green number expert. Oh, there we go. All right. So you see how it's a different color. Okay. Very good. Not too exciting, but at least you can do your hello world and understand how flow nodes work. They're super awesome and amazing, and they will make your world a better place. Okay, so that's how you print something to a screen. That's how you say, hello, Stingray. And that's really it. Later, we'll start to explore the environment and how Stingray and flow nodes can help us uh, do those better things. All right, thank you, everyone, for listening, and we will talk to you next time.